if you want to answer a research question, the way to go about it is to conduct a randomized control trial. Hello, Dr. Joe here of the drjoe.com and the 2020forum.com. If I went to Walmart today and randomly selected 100 shoppers in Walmart supermarket, I took them aside, drew their blood, sent it to the lab uh, to check for their vitamin D levels, 42 out of the 100 people will have their results come back as low vitamin D. In the same vein, if I took 100 hypertensive individuals, you know, 100 people with high blood pressure, uh, did the same thing, drew their blood, sent it to the lab to check for their vitamin D levels, 46 out of the 100 uh, people with high blood pressure will come back as vitamin D deficient. So vitamin D uh, deficiency is quite rife in the population and uh, the, the prevalence is even higher in people with high blood pressure. So we do know that vitamin D does have receptors all over the body. We've got receptors in the brain, we've got vitamin D receptors uh, in our arteries, the lining of our arteries, we've got vitamin D receptors in our muscles, uh, receptors all over our body, okay? So we know that. And for that reason, we describe vitamin D as a pleiotropic hormone. So if vitamin D uh, deficiency is that common in people with high blood pressure, it would make sense that if you gave them vitamin D supplementation, uh, that uh, you should fix their blood pressure issues. Because there have been some studies that suggested that vitamin D deficiency may have a role to play in high blood pressure causation. So if you supplemented them, it would make sense that you should be able to fix their high blood pressure issues. But is that the case? Now, that's the reason behind this video. We're going to answer that question as to whether vitamin D does help with blood pressure control or not. And uh, this video was prompted uh, by a letter that I received recently from a gentleman. And it read, Dear Dr. Joe, I have read on blogs and watched videos talking about the use of vitamin D supplements to fix high blood pressure. That propelled me to get some vitamin D supplements and have been using them for the last eight months, but haven't seen any difference in my blood pressure readings so far. My question to you is this, in your experience, does vitamin D work for hypertension? Very good question. Okay. So this gentleman is asking me for my opinion regarding the use of vitamin D for high blood pressure. Uh, so uh, rather than give him my opinion, we're going to look at the science. You know I love science, okay? We're going to look at the science. So let's kick things off by looking at the first study. We're going to look at two studies, okay? Let's kick things off by looking at the very first study here. And uh, this study was published in JAMA. And it was titled, The Effect of Vitamin D Supplementation on Blood Pressure, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis Incorporating Individual Patient Data. Now, I want you to know this very well, this very point here, incorporating individual patient data. Okay, so that's the first study we're going to look at. Uh, now, what was this study design? Let's look at the study design. Now, why I like this study is it's fairly recent and also it only included randomized control trials, okay, RCTs, randomized control trials. If you want to answer a question, if you want to answer a scientific question, the best way to go about it is by conducting randomized control trials. So in this uh, meta-analysis, they included only randomized uh, control trials and the participants would have supplemented for a minimum of four weeks. They should have supplemented with vitamin D for a minimum of four weeks for them to be included uh, in this uh, meta-analysis. And in all the studies, there should be a baseline blood pressure check and a follow-up blood pressure check, okay? And in the studies as well, they should have checked the 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels. Very, very important. We want to know whether they were deficient or not. So it's important that in the studies uh, that vitamin D levels uh, were checked. And here is the other bit I like about this very study. 
they requested raw data okay they requested raw data from the authors of the studies they, they wrote to that say let's have your raw data we want to see uh what you actually found okay blood pressure levels uh vitamin d levels all the data they wanted to see all of it so that's why i like it now let's look at uh what were the results uh for this uh study now for them what they were most interested in in fact the only thing they were interested in is uh is there a difference in systolic uh, blood pressure that's the top reading and diastolic blood pressure that's the bottom reading during this the study time okay they wanted to know whether there was a difference uh in the blood pressure readings when uh the participants entered the study and when they exited the study very very important and throughout the period as well and so uh in achieving this they uh got 46 trials uh with a total of 4,541 participants okay so they had 46 trials uh, included and so what were their findings they saw no difference in systolic blood pressure readings with vitamin d supplementation so systolic is the top reading they also saw no difference in diastolic blood pressure readings okay the bottom reading but they went a step further they did a subgroup analysis to see because they really were interested in, in trying to find out if vitamin D supplementation will help uh, blood pressure control. They, want, they wanted that question uh, to be answered. So they did a subgroup analysis and they found no response to vitamin D therapy. Okay, so it was quite rigorous. What was the study conclusion uh, by the authors? Let's look at uh, what they came up with they concluded that vitamin d supplementation is ineffective as an agent for lowering blood pressure and thus should not be used as an antihypertensive agent so from that study using vitamin d uh, did not change did not have any effect on blood pressure readings nada zilch okay so that's that study was looking at adults so i went a step for that to see whether uh, children and adolescents uh, will benefit from having vitamin d supplementation when they were hypertensive I don't forget children and adolescents some of them do have high blood pressure issues as well so that's what we're going to be looking at in study number two and this study is quite recent as well uh, published just uh, in 2020 in new trends and uh, the title is vitamin d supplementation and blood pressure in children and adolescents a systematic review and meta-analysis okay so that's the title now the study design was essentially the same the only difference is that in this second study they included non-randomized control trials so uh, what were their results let's look at the results for study number two what they found was that there was no difference in systolic blood pressure in the non-randomized uh, control trials but they saw a small difference they saw a small difference of a drop of minus 1.87 okay that's totally blood pressure readings in the non-randomized control trial so blood pressure did that totally drop by 1.87 average okay but when they looked further they discovered that those studies okay the non-randomized uh, control trials uh, the quality of the evidence was low low quality of evidence that's what they found so when they looked at the randomized control trials separately they saw no difference in systolic blood pressure readings they saw no difference in diastolic blood pressure readings again nada zilch so what was their conclusion uh, the authors concluded that vitamin d supplementation was found to be ineffective in lowering systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure in children and adolescents okay so what we're looking at here is 
the finding across the board okay now when you dig deeper uh, into the literature you might find some studies that will tell you that vitamin d does help with blood pressure control but when you look at those studies they are observational studies they, they just talk about correlation basically if you want to answer a research question the way to go about it is to conduct a randomized control trial when you do that if that intervention comes out tops then it answers that question it is unquestionably uh, the answer that you're looking for okay any answer you get from randomized control trials is the right answer that's the point I'm making now am I saying that you shouldn't use vitamin D at all of course not that's not the point behind this video I've got mine here I use mine uh, but I don't use it for that purpose I use it for bone health I use it for immune support uh, and if you're older, uh, there's also a stronger need for you to use vitamin D because it will help you to prevent falls, it will help you to prevent fractures. So uh, it's got its uses, but blood pressure control is not one of them. That's the essential point I'm trying to make in this video. So hopefully you learned something in this video. If you did, please go ahead, give the video uh, a thumbs up, please like the video. And also please share this video with your friends, family and colleagues. Share it with anybody who's got high blood pressure because they deserve to know the deal with vitamin D and high blood pressure. Now, I used somebody who believed the narrative that uh, vitamin D was one of the supplements that was good for uh, blood pressure control. If you were, please go ahead, let me know down below. And also if you were one of those people who didn't believe it as well, go ahead let me know down below uh, please join us at the 2020 forum uh, for uh, wellness issues uh, I think that's about it until next time well this is Dr. Joe signing out